All right, folks, welcome back. We're going to be looking at the NASDAQ 100 futures March delivery contract for 2023. This is our daily chart. And let's go right into the volume and balance. In here. And this is a level I had in mind for Wednesday's trading. I was expecting it to trade up into that. Now it's the body close to body opening with this single pass through here. And what makes this a volume imbalance? Well, if you look at the low of this candle here, let me move this out of the way. This candle's low, that wick, and this candle's high, that wick, and this candle's wick. All of this price action in here was closed in simply with the wicks, no bodies, okay? So because of that, my eye was drawn to that, and the algorithm would like to refer to those types of price points. Before we get any further, I know some of you are chomping at the bit for Forex commentary and such. I'm more or less just keeping your attention until we get to February 7th, and as I mentioned, we would be doing daily analysis on euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar index, in addition to obviously the NASDAQ futures and ES, e mini S&P futures. I'm not going to be doing anything more than that. Um, I'm not a crypto trader, so I had no interest in commenting on crypto. So I apologize if you've been waiting around for that. I don't really cover the, the asset class, if you will. All right, so uh, with this in mind, uh, I was anticipating a likely run up into this volume balance. So when we see this shaded area here, that color dropping down the lower time frames, which we'll do now in the 60 minute. Okay, and uh, before I get into it any further, there is something I want to bring to your attention because this is exactly what I teach my students. If you went through the content also on my YouTube channel for core content month one through 12, which is my premium mentorship core lessons, I teach and had taught and always have taught that my students should be only focusing on Monday. Tuesday and Wednesday up to New York session for trading on non-farm payroll weeks. So non-farm payroll is the week, it's typically the first week of every month. And on that Friday, employment numbers come out. On Thursday and Friday of that week, it tends to be a little choppy, a little less likely to be as precise as one would expect or hope for. And the same thing occurs usually after New York session on Wednesday. So any position overnight from Tuesday into Wednesday, London Open, that would be favorable, but we usually try to square positions. But I forced myself into the environment today just to show you how uh, the elements that I look for that are repeating in phenomenon that have precision signatures that give me high degree of accuracy and such. Uh, they don't pan out as precise as other days or, or weeks in the month. So you'll see some of those elements creep into this analysis in the trade review. So I've already posted a real quick vignette prior to this video, and I shared it on Twitter earlier as well. But uh, this is going to be more or less me breaking it down. So that way, if you want to know how to do this, it's not a enticement for you to trade on non-farm payroll weeks, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. It's to just draw your attention to the fact that this is why I teach my students this. I mean, look at the price action here. I mean, just look at it. We had FOMC today at 2 o'clock. So all of this back and forth movement, it never even touched the volume balance. But that's fine. It doesn't need to do that to be profitable. This is the level I'm looking for. So you could make the argument that, hey, look, you know, you have this. Here, it traded up into that. Yeah, sure, that's fine. But I'm looking for a higher time frame PD array to reach to. So while it did take out relative equal highs here, as we'll see in the lower time frames, and you probably already watched in that little short video, it's not enough for me to feel satisfied in that. I'm always in a pursuit of precision. I'm always looking for elements of 
algorithmic price delivery that will be a step beyond the average retail analysis concepts. So we're going to look at this low here on the third, and we're going to dive into this here, that fractal, that low inside this price action is going to give me insight about this low here, why I trusted going long there and a run for the relative equal highs and potentially run up into this area here. So if you are a Forex trader or a non-US trader and you see this market here and you think to yourself, well, I can't trade that market because it's a American futures contract. You can trade the US 100. Okay, so Forex traders that have like MT4, which I don't use MT4, but I know a lot of you guys all around the world that are outside the US and some of you that are in the US are trading in offshore brokers that in my opinion, you shouldn't be doing that, but to each their own. You are invited to go in and look at it, and we'll look at it briefly towards the end of the video as well. But uh, for now, just know that the concepts I'm teaching you here are salient to those markets. So, for instance, if you're not a U.S. citizen and you want to trade these types of markets, while you may not be able to engage the actual futures contract because you're outside the states, you can trade for NASDAQ futures, like when we're looking at this symbol here. This symbol on trading view would be NQH2023. That's for the futures contract in the US market. If you're outside the US and you're using an NT4 broker that has access to US 100, it's equivalent. It's not going to mark to market perfectly as you would see this, but you'll see later on it's close enough to operate in. If you're going to be trading the ES in the US markets, obviously. You know, American traders, we use the ESH2023 right now as the front month. It's March delivery. H in the name of the symbol on trading view is correlated to the month of March. That's the delivery contract. When that expires, we'll be going to June, and that symbol is M. Okay, so if you're going to be using a MT4 or outside the US broker and you're trading like in a Forex type broker, and you want to do ES or S&P, the equivalent would be US 500. Okay, and while we're not going to look at that tonight, just know that you can go through and, and compare and contrast that on TradingView. Yes, you're going to need a real-time data. It's not terribly expensive, but uh, you can procure that on TradingView, and I don't get a kickback for that. There's no relationship business-wise. There's no affiliate thing for me to get paid for recommending it. Okay, I'm just telling you what I use. It's inexpensive and it's a very easy platform to work with. So I have had no complaints with it. So here we have the, if I'm not mistaken also, the US 100 and the US 500 CFDs, while the US traders are not really particularly allowed to trade those, um, the Futures contract is where we're supposed to be trading it. Those are real time, but the futures market pricing, like for ES and or NQ, you have to pay for real time exchange data. Okay, so it's not a lot of money. I think it's five dollars per month, and it's really, you know, in my opinion, it's it's rather inexpensive. But we're going to take a deep dive into this low here and focus on these relative equal highs and that volume down so that we have a framework here on the hourly chart. So let's drop down to 15. Okay, so you can see that low here in these relative equal highs. And then we have that run here that fell short. And we're gonna, again, focus on this area in here. Already you can start to see there is a imbalance there, but we're gonna fine tune that little area into the five minute chart. Okay, so relative equal highs. And don't just use my charts or my analysis and lecture. You want to actually go into your charts, look at it yourself, find it on your charts. So eight o'clock in the morning on January. And again, always, you're going to get sick, sick and tired of me saying this, but your trading view chart should always set to New York time. Okay, so that way you'll be able to find everything that I'm referring to in my charts. So this low here 
is January 4th, Wednesday, 2023, on a five minute chart. If you scrub back over to the third, Tuesday, January 2nd, I'm sorry, January 3rd rather, you'll see that we have this down close candle and we have this movement here in price. Okay, so that's a buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. But this low, I'm sorry, this high of this candle here, this down close candle, prior to this move up, that's what I'm anchoring on for the price level of 10864.75. Okay, so if we look at that in relationship to the low, it pretty much nails that right there. That's not enough. That's where I was looking and had my initial interest in it. Now we're going to drop down to a one minute chart. And while we're talking, I want you to remember that I'm not limited to just the model that was taught on 2022 mentorship on this YouTube channel. So while it may be a little bit frustrating for some of you because I'm showing you things that are within the grasp of a student that studies the things that's on this channel. I'm not a one trick pony. I'm not a one model trader. I have lots of trading models and these concepts are authored by me. So when I coded these, these things are at my disposal. I can reach and use them when and how I want to use them. So you as a student of the market and looking for utilization of these concepts, you're going to try to gravitate to what makes most sense to you. Okay, and when we're watching price in a few minutes, uh, when we get into the actual replay of the real time data, the video I showed the little tiny little vignette where I sped it up to like two minutes and some se some seconds or so. The little vignette that I had that sped up was like an hour and 20 minutes or so compressed down inside of two minutes. Okay, so very, very quick replay of all of the actual executions. The annotations and then now when i get done doing all this preamble here we're going to walk through it again but it's sped up to 44 minutes or thereabouts okay so it's still a little bit lengthy but it's about halfway or so okay so it allows us to get through it without having to be every single second which is going to be monotonous if we do that but if you're going to be with me in the live sessions it's going to be very close to that but longer. Okay, so as every individual one minute candle, as you see here, paints, the candle has to close and then another one begins. Okay, so it's real easy to get tricked into thinking, oh, this is real easy to hold on to because it's a one minute chart and it's going to be fast market. It's still time. Okay, so time has to be paid. Okay, with patience. And if you don't have that, or if you just think that you're going to watch the videos and I'm seeing a lot of frustrations in the comments which I also disabled, but forgot to turn it off for the little small little vignette. Um, the only reason why I put the vignette up is because I forgot to put my watermark on the video and I shared it on Twitter. And a lot of folks like to go on Instagram, Facebook, and even re-upload re the video on YouTube. And then I have it taken down because I don't want you to upload my videos. Okay, you don't have my permission to do that. So they pretend to be the person that took the trade if i don't have a watermark on it so that's the reason why i put watermarks on so anyway i gave you all that with no extra charge but i'd like to explain why i do things and why i don't do things so we're going to go back inside that old low on the third we're scrubbing back and you're going to see there is that buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency, that single candle right here. I'll move it out of the way so you can see. And that down close candle, which was on the five minute chart, you can see that is what it's anchored on. So as I mentioned before, and you're gonna see a lot of things not actually be in my chart because I'm working with one and five minute charts real time showing you that there's an algorithm. Yes, you can read it. Yes, I'm getting a feel for where the market's going but i'm not trying to absolutely mark up everything because as a reminder i only have the time to see identify 
calculate, process, envision what it is the algorithm is going to do next, all at the same time that that one minute candle and five minute candle is painting. Okay, so in real time when we do our live sessions beginning on February 7th, I don't have the luxury of always typing things out. And I won't have to because you'll be sitting there with me and I'll be able to talk about it audibly. Okay, so there will be witnesses here. They'll be able to say, yeah, I was here. I saw that. And not that I need that, okay, but the public, you know, likes to see those types of things when they come to a, a venue or an educator, you know, after the fact. It just seems, if you look at the examples, it looks too good to be true. And I appreciate those compliments, and I take that as a, as a compliment when I see people doubting it. But I don't want you to think that I'm going to be doing this for you when we're doing live sessions, because it's not going to be like that at all. It's going to be me pointing where the market's likely to go. And then I'll comment on what I see in price, but I will not be pushing the button in front of you. OK, so when we do the, the live walk through, you know, well, not live walk through, but the, the replay of me actually executing, I'll kind of comment pretty much like you'll expect to see me do when we're doing live streams. OK, so. Hopefully it'll make a little bit better sense as to what you should be expecting when we start in February. So we have our buy side and balance, sell side and efficiency. Okay, yes, we went down, but we left a small portion open. So that means it's always a candidate to come back and revisit that area. And if it overshoots it, that's fine. The order block on the five minute chart is always a possibility. Okay, so we traded down into a completely closed and hit the order block. And then we had consolidation. And then we entered into the 10.30 to 11 o'clock time window. And we dropped down initially right at the 9.30 opening. Where are we at here? 9.30. Right there. So at 9.30, we had sell stops below here. It tagged those came back up for the buy side, buy stops here. And then notice they left these relative equal highs open. Now, the reason why I'm keeping all these notes here is because I want you to see that this is the actual chart that was annotated real time while I was executing and managing the trade. So while it is a little too busy here, I'll clean it up when we get to the need for doing so. But right now, it needs to be there for context. So we left buy side liquidity, that's buy stops, above these relative equal highs. Now, traders are taught that this is resistance. So therefore, lower prices should be expected. And we did, we had lower prices, but down to a level of a discount. And my expectation, much like I was sharing with the ES, there's a daily volume imbalance up here in that shaded area. So I felt that was a draw on liquidity. So that means what? Even though we had a movement lower at 9.30, going into the 10 o'clock hour, it's going down to go up. And because it's FOMC, and it's also the non-farm payroll week conditions, now when I say week, not W-E-A-K, W-E-E-K, the week, Monday through Friday, because it's non-farm payroll week, that tendency to be sloppy in price delivery. Uh, it's not as precise. Targets won't really get filled perfectly or maybe not even get touched at all. I'm going to show you how the US 100 for non-US traders actually went to its daily volume imbalance. So it'll be hopefully an encouragement for you to study real time using the US 100. So you don't necessarily have to have real time data. And I'm, I'm taking the liberty based on what I believe. I don't know, I'm almost certain that US 100, US 500, US 30, which is for Dow. Um, I don't trade the Dow futures, but I use it for analysis. And you'll see me doing that in more examples as we go forward and also in the live stream. So you'll see how I pull up those charts and kind of show you real time SMT diversions and relative strength analysis and not the RSI indicator either. <laughs> okay, so when we're looking at a market that's likely to go up, and my belief was we were likely to go up into that volume imbalance, as I mentioned yesterday. Uh, that was a potential draw if we continue to go higher. If we see the market drop like this into a deep discount, 
it's likely to go higher and attack number one the buy side here and if it's going to go above here it might just go all the way up into that daily volume imbalance or so that shaded area up here okay so with that in mind let's look at how the market dove into that one minute fair value gap in the form of a buy side imbalance also an efficiency and if these terms are confusing to you i promise the more time you spend with me and see opportunities repeating with the use of them it will become secondhand nature to you to understand what it is I'm referring to. Like anything else, a new language is difficult, but you'll see by repetition over and over and over again, these things are going to be easy to pick up. Don't quit. Okay, I promise it's worth it. Stick with it. So we trade down into the order block, we trade down into the BISI, buy side balance, so some efficiency, which is a form of fair value gap. It rallies up, consolidates, and then we dive one more time below a short term low. And then we run above this short term high here. Okay, so that is what? That's a shift in market structure while it's in discount. Okay, it left this fair value gap right there. Okay, so this fair value gap, let me take it off so that way you can see it. That one candle right here, that's your fair value gap. So let's add it back. And the way I did that is click on it, highlight it, hit delete key. It takes it off and then when you want to back just hold down control and tap z okay so it'll undo that in case you want to know and then the market ran away above this fair value gap and i mentioned that i wanted to see price stay above that and it would not go back below that it's not needed to okay and i'll get into that when we're doing the live walkthrough of the trade execution and management but i want to cover why i chose the, the nasdaq today versus the es so if you probably notice this down here okay it's a real secret indicator now, only the best hedge fund traders market makers the elites the, the the folks that pull the strings to make the markets go up and down they have this indicator down here on their charts i know it's hard to believe right it's hard to believe <laughs> yeah, i'm just being facetious if you look at this and we're going to add the use of the ES. Okay, so all I did was compare. And if you're using TradingView up in the upper left hand corner up here, you're going to see like a little plus symbol. If you click on that, that's your compare utility. You just type in ESH2023 and it'll plot over, well, you got to click new pane, new pane, P-A-N-E, and then it'll plot it below the instrument you have open. Since we're talking about NASDAQ, which is NQH2023 for the symbol in TradingView, you would be plotting it down here. Now, for non-U.S. students, you can be utilizing the U.S. 100 up here and then hitting the compare feature up here. It has like a little plus symbol on TradingView up in this area. Look up on when you're doing your own pause the video if you want to go check and see what i'm talking about and then you would do to get the, the overlay like this down here for es non-us market the cfd for us 500 and then it's going to plot it as a line chart and then you click over here that little gear and where it says inputs oh, i'm sorry style you're going to be doing candlesticks okay and address them as you see here it's going to come up as a default on line. You don't want that. You want the current the candlesticks, okay? So you can compare and contrast for S and T divergence. Now, with a vertical line, everything during with this low they match. All right, if we drop a vertical line on the chart here. Let me thicken that up and darken it up for you. Okay, so this is our reference point. So wherever I drag this, it should have matching highs and matching lows okay now watch what happens when i drag to the right going forward in time okay right there we have this high higher than that high slightly higher than that high see that es is not showing the strength to the upside that nasdaq is here so keep marching forward going forward and right 
there, we can see that this high and this high, NASDAQ is lower, but ES is higher. Doesn't mean anything yet. Watch what happens. We have now this short term high that's been taken out by this high. This high is this high here for NQ. Okay, so NASDAQ's high is here on the one minute chart, and ES's one minute chart high is here. Over here, look what we have. We have relative equal highs. See that? But we have a strong, a stronger, higher punch through by NQ. So NASDAQ was higher here. After, here's the key point, a short term high was taken and then a fair value gap was left. Okay. After digging into this one minute buy sign balance of under efficiency or gap. Okay. And we expect the market to turn here. So we have relative strength analysis on our side that NQ or NASDAQ futures was the better buy. And again, why? The short term high here is much more prominent of a break here than it is here. These are relatively flat. This, I'm looking for the relative strength leader, one that wants a breakout higher, faster, stronger. Okay. And while they both pretty much moved in sympathy with one another, the more sharper technical picture was seen in the NASDAQ. Notice that there is a small little gap here. Very small. Let me zoom in here without messing up any of the relationship between the two. There's a small little gap right there, but look how sloppy it is. See how it completely goes down below it? We don't have that here on NASDAQ. Okay, we don't see that. Why didn't we see it? Because it's stronger on NASDAQ. NASDAQ had much more relative strength comparatively to that of the ES, E mini SP. So I'm going to trust this one because visually I can see that fair value gap. It's much more prominent here versus the very lethargic looking fair value gap down here. This one's much more energetic. It's much more obvious. And it is also with a market that's moving more explosive to the upside. Okay, so I want to be in this market buying this fair value gap right there and trusting that it will not completely close in. Why? Because we want this to act as what? A breakaway gap. Why should it be a breakaway gap? Because we've already treated down into this one minute fair value gap in the form of a buy side and balance sell side efficiency. Real quick for your notes. If you see a candle that's moving like this one way and it's going up like this. So from low to high, and it's an up close candle, and it's one single pass like that, and it creates a fair value gap. That fair value gap is labeled a buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency, BISI, okay? B I S I. If the candle opens and trades down and creates a fair value gap, that one single candle or fair value gap is labeled and categorized as a SIBI, S I B I. Sell side in balance, buy side in efficiency. Okay, so that way you know now for your notes, that's what you should be having in there. BISIs are bought for longs or traded to as targets when short. SIBIs are sold short or targeted from longs. Okay, so that's how you want to use them interchangeably. Okay. And we'll talk a little bit more as we go throughout this year. But for now, that's enough for your notes for this one. So the market rallies from here and trades into, I'm going to take this ES off now, okay? So that we, we've accomplished what it is that we needed to have in terms of insight from it. Let's scroll this over. And the market trades down into this fair value gap here. And in leaving this range right there you'll see that that's drawn and i talk about how it's not going to go back below that the algorithm will not reprice back below that why because this in this area here it becomes a balanced price range one single pass one single pass and we have a fair value gap so it's going to work in this one 
and then accumulate new long positions. I even talk about how this area here with this fair value gap, I'm going to draw it again like this. I even stated that you would see this form support. I typed it out and you'll see it again as I did it. And the only thing I was incorrect about, and this is typical of FOMC and also non-farm payroll weeks, where my precision is just a little bit skewed, um, this low right there, I looked at it as a potential to create an institutional order flow entry drill, which is just a small little movement into a fair value gap that doesn't completely close it in and you can buy it. High frequency trading algorithms use that as a entry model. And it's too broad of a topic to try to cover inside of this. You know, I'll mention it in passing when we're watching real time data in the live sessions you know, throughout this year. Just know that it is a partial entry into a fair value gap that will not even go halfway. Okay, it's just like small little entry into it and then picks up orders and runs. Okay, that's basically all it is. So it's an entry into a fair value gap, but not even the halfway movement of it. And you see the market does in fact create support here. It rallies. I anchor to this down close candle. It's open price. Draw it out in time. Anticipate a order block forming. Find some support. Creates a small little gap in here. This is a measuring gap. So we had a breakaway gap down here. And this is a measuring gap. So from this long to this point here, that's essentially half of the move. And then we have buy side up here. So we can target the bulk of our exits just above this high here because we have a confirmation that this isn't getting filled in. And you've already seen several examples of me doing this. This is how you determine and classify real time a measuring gap. Okay, a measuring gap is classic technical analysis. But every time I've ever looked at books and courses and educators, they never really taught how to you know, utilize it. They can talk about it after the fact. They can see it in hindsight and show it to you in books and sell courses and things like that. But nobody I've ever seen ever be able to identify them real time and understand when they're going to stay open, when they're likely going to be filled, those types of things. And especially with electronic markets like this or 24 hour markets, where we don't have gaps in the same sense that we did when we had open outcry. And I've talked about this a lot when I was doing Twitter spaces, those little podcasts. Uh, that idea of gaps or inefficiencies in price where there actually is no trading at all, that's a real liquidity void. Things like this get called a liquidity void. And that's unfortunate because it's not a liquidity void. This is a buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. It's buy side imbalance, that means it's moved too aggressively one side to the buy side, and it's inefficiently delivered for sell side. So what is it? Buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency, which makes it a busy. I made these names up for that very reason. The algorithm creates these little areas here, and we want to see this type of thing stay open. Okay. Other educators out there, I know Mr. Chris Laurie, he, he has a group of people, and he's always talked about these things as a liquidity void, and they tend to fill in. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. My logic tells you when they don't and what you do with that information. Okay. Um, I did not learn liquidity void from Mr. Chris Laurie. Uh, I just used that term when I was on Baby Pips. People that were familiar with him, they said, Oh, yeah, that's a liquidity void. Chris Laurie teaches it. I said, Okay, well, I'll just go with that. So it saves me the time of having to teach something about that particular thing. I'm just going to go into more detail about where they form and how to utilize them. But anyway, you know, obviously we're in. PhD level you know, technical science now here on this channel and you're seeing a lot more precision, a lot more understanding and, and reasons why things are the way they are. So we can hone in on opportunities that the algorithm will present to smart money. Who is smart money? People like me and you while you're learning. Once you understand these concepts, you'll be able to go out there without me talking about it, without me hand holding. You'll be able to see it. You'll anticipate. You'll know exactly what the market's likely to do. More times than not, that's all you need. That's your little edge. And you wait for specific times of the day. And you wait for all of the signatures that you look for to justify your trade. And how do you know what they are? You're watching real-time data with me this year. So you're going to start seeing setups that form repetitively. And you'll be able to see them 
so many times real time, whether you're there with me when it's being done or after the fact and you're watching the recordings. The recordings will be long because it's the entire session, unless I cut it short because something reached a target or whatever. But they can go up to two hours. And that's why I'm only going to do two of them a week. And if I get a good move, it may just be one for that week. So I'm kind of like tossing that in there and preparing you for it. Oh, you're already pulling back. You know, I'm just, I have to manage my own personal life too. So it, my objective is for you to find one good setup a week. And one good setup, you can see there's a plethora of setups. You know, I've already shown the equivalent of like 40,000 in just the last five trading days. So, <laughs> and they're not little micro movements. They're not the five handles I'm teaching you to strive for as a low hanging fruit objective to, to grow into. If you get five handles consistently, you can find that. That's 20 ticks. If you can find that consistently, you'll have no trouble finding the setups like I'm showing you here. You just got to find a place where they all nest together, which is a market maker buy model in this example here. So the market continues up. I mentioned that this would be an area where the next draw on liquidity would be, which is a rejection block. And then I mentioned I'd take three above here, and I do. And then above here, I took three more, and then I left two on wanting to see it trade up into that daily volume and bounce that shaded area up here. And I took one off when I felt that it was not likely to go up there entirely. It almost stopped me out here. And finally, I looked at this as the last line in the sand. If it crosses that, I'm going to let it take my stop. And it gave up the ghost and come back and stopped me out. And ever since then, it hadn't done anything higher. Okay. And then we had the FOMC noise. I say that facetiously <laughs> and then we break down. I'm not going to cover any of this here because it's not going to be pertinent to what we're trying to do because you shouldn't be trading FOMC. Okay. It's, it's like a non-farm payroll event. It's a carnival ride. Yes, I can, but because I can doesn't mean you should. Okay. So I'm trying to be a responsible mentor, not someone that's just trying to promise you you're going to know everything. Okay. I'm teaching you how to find one good setup per week that has a whole lot of probabilities and statistical edge behind it and the logic, not just me, a lot of my detractors and people that don't like me or a competitor, therefore, uh, will come forward and say, you know, I'm cherry picking. And I'm, I'm sorry if this is beyond the scope of what you can do and sell to your, your students or whatever. But I'm, I'm trying to be in my own lane here. I'm trying to educate all of you. You don't have to subscribe to what I'm teaching. You can think that everything I'm showing you here is all contrived, okay? A, a figment of my own imagination. But the problem you're going to have is, is you're going to see it in the charts live. And I'm not leaning on any other logic. So that's what's going to be fascinating for me. How many of you I can convert in understanding that these markets are absolutely controlled to the smallest degree, okay? And... Once you see months of it over and over and over again, you'll be, con you'll be convinced. Okay. Try I'm, I'm convinced that you will be convinced. Let's put it that way. So that's the overall markup and just the short and skinny of it. Now I want to go into the actual replay and management of the trade and how I did everything and why I did it when it happened. Okay. And let's do that now. All right. So. With everything I've just outlined, all the logic as to why I'm anticipating it, I'm going long here. You can see the actual orders. And don't be discouraged by the 2100. That's actually 2.1% risk. Okay, it's based on a $100,000 paper trading account. And there's some of you like to choke on the fact that it's paper trading. But if you can't appreciate the fact that the precision elements are there with real-time data, because you can't do anything like with market replay on TradingView, you can only trade or execute with live data. So live data is the only way you're going to be able to do it. So you can't be faking it. You can't game it like MT4 and fake it like frauds do. So buy, sell liquidity. That's where my initial draw on the market is so this is a market maker buy model and you can learn more about that in my scout sniper series 
which is free on this YouTube channel as well. So there's the order block. I'm waiting for price to move away from that. I want to see it expand up above these relative equal highs here. That's buy side liquidity. So in my eye, it should be, um, well, your eye should be trained over time. And now my stop is to break even. Because if it goes back below after running those relative equal highs where the buy side liquidity is written, uh, that would not be a good thing. So I want to make sure I'm controlling risk. So I want to see this fair value gap, that pink area, act as support. Okay, so what specific level? The high of it. I want to see it expand above it. And as it's starting to go up, I'm watching how price is gravitating towards that rejection block. Okay, and I like the expansion that we're seeing here. And I'm not thinking that we're going to collapse and go the other direction based on all the things I've already outlined. And there is a daily volume imbalance that's already shaded on my chart. You can't see it yet, but I'll scrub the video down on the axis, on the price axis, and you'll start seeing it in a moment. But the, uh, I just moved the stop up. And I'm going to look to buy or pyramid more of this position as it drops back down into that fair value gap. When this candle closes, I'm anticipating a fair value gap to form. When There you go. So now I have a gap there. So I like that gap being there above the shaded area that's pink. So I don't believe that that's going to have to be traded back down through. So that pink area becomes an area of a balanced price range. That's not classic support and resistance. That's not supply and demand. That's not Elliott wave. That's not thing harmonic. Okay. It's algorithmic. And I understand that some of you feel that this is complicated. I've actually had some people already put comments in the videos and say, that's it's too complicated. I can't, I can't do this. Okay. I understand, but I'm not here teaching the people that's going to tap out. I'm here teaching the folks that are really wanting to learn how these markets book price. And it was complicated for me as well. So I'm basically stating that the, the algorithm is not going to reprice below that. And it's going to be attacking the liquidity at 11,050 buy side. So that's basically above the buy side liquidity pool that's being highlighted in the upper left hand corner. So I'm moving the stop up. I can trust that the stop will not be hit because the pink area is a protected area. The algorithm does not need to go back down there. And the reasons why is because it's already repriced and it's aggressively going to attack what? Those buy stops above those equal highs at 11,048. So 11,050, that's where I'm anticipating the next draw on liquidity. But there are two targets before we get there. And I'll obviously mention them as we go. Now that right there is a classic bull flag. I don't want to get wrapped up in thinking it's going to break down, but it comes down into this little area in here, back into that fair value gap that I like. Okay, I like that gap that's not being shaded yet. I like that right there. So I'm telling you with this annotation that watch the support form here. Where at? Right at the top of that fair value gap. Okay, and I want to pyramid more. So the six position contract long I have, and now I'm going to draw out that fair value gap here. I want to be in more of the position. I like the fact that we dug down into it two times. We went down into that blue shaded fair value gap twice. So I'm putting two in there, whereas I normally would have done like three or something to that effect. I just want to make sure I'm building more position and I'm basically saying that naked charts are superior to indicator dribble. And unless you have a time-based chart, you're not going to see these elements and watch how price shows how it wants to rally. 
you see people out there they have range bars or they have uh Heikinashi or Rinko bars. That stuff's nonsense. It's absolutely garbage. It's nothing behind that at all. The algorithms have no respect of any of that stuff. And without a time-based chart, you cannot see the fair value gaps, the imbalances, the volume imbalances, the busy, the city, all these elements that the algorithm actually refers to. So when I coded these things in price action, I'm looking for price to return back to them with the logic that they will perform as they're coded. So if the repeating phenomenon is identified by you, you're going to see there's certain setups that are going to be very easy for you to trust. Not all of them are going to be setups that you're going to say, oh, I would definitely take a trade based on that because I have lots of students and I'm expecting large ranges to just now come in. So in other words, I'm expecting price to begin to start moving higher as long as we're not digging into that pink shaded area. It can dip down into it, but not by much. And I'll explain that as we go. So I'm looking for the beginning of green candles moving up. Notice also that we went from large green candles and now we're in small little range candles. Okay, so the next expectation would be what? Big candles. So if we're bullish, we don't think that that pink area is going to go and break and allow price to go down, then the next series of big candles should be in what direction? Up. Okay, so when I'm annotating my chart and I'm typing out, you know, large range candles are coming or big green candles are coming, I'm studying and I just went in and bought more. So my position is at 10 contracts. I'm saying this is a final partial entry, but I want to illustrate further if the opportunity presents itself. So 10 contracts is about as much as I wanted to do with this position because it's a big, it's a big position. Like I'm looking for like 600 ticks and it's, it's a pretty significant run in price. I've already highlighted the next buy stop or buy side liquidity right above that, uh, 11,018 and a quarter. Now, right here, this is again, the rejection block. So I'm anticipating price reaching up into that. So I'm building all of the framework as you would do in your own analysis or in hindsight, when you do your back testing, when you do all of your charts, you want to be annotating them just like I'm doing here, looking at the logical levels. And I taught what the PD arrays are and you learn more about them in the core content lessons. Now that's a classic bull flag and retail traders may in fact want to try to go long in here. That right there would cause them to go long because it's a breakout and they would put their stop loss right below the swing low, just to the left of my most recent uh, partial entry long. And watch what the algorithm does here. It's designed to do this very thing here. When bull flags are correct and it's anticipating a higher run in price, it will always likely do this very thing right there. Boom, stops are engaged. So now I'm typing out that it will sharply reverse higher here based on what I'm just explained to you there. So now retail traders don't trust that bull flag because they got stopped out. They will not re-enter. They'll, they'll be too fearful to get back in. And that's why it's coded that way. Now, again, while I don't have that pink range on the chart again, just know that it can dip down just a little bit below that bottom of that highest blue rectangle. It can do that just by a little shallow little dip below that and that's all that would be reasonable and then higher prices would be delivered 
So I'm watching price. I'm thinking to myself, okay, while I do believe that that range that was shaded in pink that I no longer have on the chart because I want to keep your attention on the very salient moments as price is being delivered. I'm thinking to myself, you know, it might offer an institutional order flow entry drill. So it may need to go just a little bit lower, a couple ticks lower. I'm extending the fair value gap. And I'm just, again, reminding you that's where I'm thinking it's going to go. These are all done through TradingView live. There's none of this annotations after the fact. It's all happening real time. And you can see one of the other signatures of why I don't like trading post New York session on Wednesday is because it's like this. Okay, it's not as precise. Like I usually get in on the low candles and get on the high candles. And it's just real muddy during this particular time of the month. And I'm anticipating a likelihood of institutional order flow. So if it trades down and just touches just below that line there, I would go in with another partial and pyramid more and trust the fact that it would not collapse going lower. Okay, so that looks nice right there. You want to see that type of delivery. Again, find that in support and resistance. Your classic support and resistance taught from like John Murphy's book, Technical Analysis of the Financial Markets. It's not there, folks. It's not. And for people that trade bull flags, you know, they're getting stopped out here. They're gone. And when a retail trader gets stopped out, it's not likely that they will re-enter. And I've got my finger on the trigger to buy one more in the event that it drops down and offers me an institutional order flow entry drill. And all that is is me dropping a long if it drops below that little trend line I have there. And highlighting that big up close candle, if it dips down below that, I'm thinking that it's just one last little attempt to trick traders going short before it rips higher. So I'm just sitting there waiting in the event that it offers it to me. I'll take and add one more contract long. You can see that upper left hand corner. I had my mouse sitting right over top of the buy button, but we're done. Now I'm drawing your attention on the level that was just outside the view of your viewership on this video that I'm not sure what color that is <laughs> to be honest with you I want to say uh, yellow but it, it may not be yellow so I don't know what that color is but focus up there and that's a good distance away so we're not looking at little tiny micro scalps and we're looking at the down close candle that's to the left of where price is now I like that as an order block and I just put my limit order up there just at the bottom of that daily volume imbalance. So I just extended it out for a bullish order block. Now, I was actually trying to anchor to the high of that candle. But because I'm, again, monitoring a one-minute candle, I know the likelihood of it touching the open is there. That's fine. But I would have anchored it if I had cared enough to do it. I would have put it right on the high. And you can see it would have hit it perfectly. This is beautiful delivery now. So I want to see it run up above that 10, 987 level. My old eyes are, are failing me here. It's hard for me to focus in on even with my glasses. 30 years looking at charts, man. It, it really takes a toll. Between that and light sensitivity from a motorcycle accident in 2009, it's it's not fun. All right, now watch that order block because it can always be reclaimed. Now, a reclaimed order block is where it acts as support, it runs away, and it comes back down and trades into it again. It's completely normal. It's not something that is abnormal. It's not something to be afraid of. 
Remember, the, the logic was that it will not go below that original shaded area that's no longer shaded now. But in your charts, you should have it in there. And this is going to be the number one complaint that I don't have enough annotations in my chart when I'm doing a live session. I have to read price the way I'm used to reading it. And having annotations, number one, it takes the focus off of watching price when I'm annotating. So if I'm watching what I'm typing, I'm trying to spell it correctly so that way I'm articulating the information correctly on a one and five minute chart. And the question is going to be is, okay, well, if that's the issue, then why don't you just trade with a higher time frame chart? Well, you're all complaining that my videos are too long. So now what's the complaint going to be when I have to do the entire thing in front of you <laughs> for up to two hours? And the, I, mean, I can speed the videos up, but it's not going to be the same learning experience. So it gets back to you know, who really wants to learn here. You know, the people that come into my comment sections or talk about me in other circles about how it's long-winded. I don't get to the point. The point is, is you want to learn how to make money. Okay, that, that's, that's why you're trying to do this, whether you're learning it from me or someone else. You want to learn how to make money. This is not a hobby. It's not a game. Okay, it's not a video game. You're in here trying to make money and enough to sustain a secondary income and maybe even replace it. So I'm looking for a price to want to reach up into that rejection block, which is where I have annotated two contracts will come off above the rejection block. So I'm anticipating they're going to, it's going to spike up in there. And I'm going to get a little overzealous here and type out the very instructions that I'm selling two contracts. So here I am reinforcing the idea that it will drive above here and give me and give it time, folks. And a fellow reach out to me on uh, an email and say, all this stuff is added after the fact. That's the reason why you speed up the videos. So here's, here's what I'm doing. I'm typing it out so that we know that when it goes up there and I hit the arrow, I'm sorry, when I hit the, uh, sell button that's toggled for two contracts and the arrow appears, you'll understand that that wasn't something added after the fact I'm showing you here because I know the videos get sped up and it's hard to see when things happen. So I wanted to put sold two contracts as stated. I would, I was ahead of time now because I did it, I'm thinking to myself, now I got to wait here longer because it had, I not typed out sold two contracts as stated I would, it would have already ran up there and allowed me to get it off. So uh, I, I'm just internal dialogue. That's all I'm sharing with you here. And I make light of it and type, type that out to let you know. I had to type it out, which made it probably jinx it. I had to sit in this a little bit longer before it gives me an opportunity to sell two of the 10 contracts. So all of this here is preamble to a, a nice run up into two more liquidity pools, the one I'm waiting for, and then that spike wick high at 11,018 and a quarter. And again, this is sped up a little bit. So it's a sloppy day. And sloppy days are, and you know, they're very hard to work with. And I don't like to engage them. We'll be doing some of them where I anticipate this likely very thing happening. So that way you know what it feels like to be in there watching it. Don't turn them off. Okay. You want to know what this feels like and how to engage them. Okay. You all think, you know, all these setups that I show you know, you're going to walk out there and do the same thing and know exactly how to do it because you watch some videos like ICT Netflix. Uh, that doesn't work. Okay. You have to be out here in the trenches doing this. And again, this is sped up still. It's literally a little bit more than halfway the speed. If you look at the second count in the lower right hand corner, it's ticking along. Okay. It's, it's, it's going more than, uh, <laughs> about 50% of, of the normal speed. So it's, it's going faster than you would be if we were watching it real time. So while this was a recording of real time, 
it's still long. It's still drawn out. Okay. And this is where you forge patience and patience is required to do this profitably and with longevity. So <laughs> there's no shortcuts. You have to watch price action just like this. And I'm referring to how you shouldn't be thinking it's going to reverse because it's not. It's going to pop higher and allow me to take two contracts off. And I want to delete that sold two contracts as stated I would because it's it's starting to irritate me because <laughs> there's too many things on my chart and I don't trade like this. But for you to learn it, you know, it's edifying for you to have it on the chart. So it's ready to pop up here. And I'm thinking to myself, this is a really drawn out process. A lot of time just for that small little range still not be delivered yet. And I apologize because I heard the first portion of this video when I was cropping the two segments together and the acoustics of my new trading office is not that great. Okay, so uh, the audio will improve as we go through the process of you know, producing more content. I'm in a new home, in a new room, and I'm literally talking where my voice is bouncing off my trade desk and the monitors too. So there isn't a lot of muffling that would normally be done. So it's going to sound like a little annoying to say the audio sucks or get a new microphone or I have a very high and expensive microphone. Unfortunately, the rooms and sometimes I'm in my RV and my recordings and the, the acoustics isn't favorable. So unfortunately, that's, you know, that's going to have an effect on the playback. So I don't use a dollar menu microphone. Okay, so I put that shaded area in blue, that little thin one. That's a measuring gap. So I'm looking at it as it might give me an institutional order flow, like just trade just into a little bit. You can see I'm getting ready to try to buy two if it gives it to me. But I prefer to leave it open. Okay, and if it leaves it open, that's a measuring gap. Then I can trust that we're going to go up to 11,050, 11,060. I'm just being facetious. I had to pre-type the told you so laugh out loud, which in my mind, I'm thinking this is the reason why I got to wait for it because I typed it out. Had I not typed it out, it would have already went up there. There we go. So two contracts have been taken off as a partial. Stop is still where I have it. I'm waiting for it to expand more to the upside. And what I'm saying here, this is like a speed bump level. In other words, don't look at that as resistance. Don't look at, I see a lot of people, uh, there was a fellow uh, years ago, Jason Stapleton. Okay. And he used to do things like this where you know, above the candles bodies, he would use that as resistance and sell short there. Uh, that's not what the algorithm sees. And we're looking for it to expand through this. And all it was is a small little area to stop, pause a little bit, and then it's going to expand further on the upside. So I'm just dimming out the comments that are no longer salient and recording where I did, in fact, do what I said I was expected to do and planned on throughout the trade management. So everything's being dimmed out that's no longer salient, but you can still see them in the chart as the price is being booked. Okay, and what I'm going to be watching is how we run above that. Now I'm going to trim it down to one contract at a time, and I want to see it expand and make a big candle or a series of big candles going up. The first contract I'll press, I'm going to try to take three of them off above that next level of 11,018 and a quarter. But notice what I do. I don't go and click three at one time. I want to try to gravitate towards that. 11,048 level. Remember, there's buy side liquidity. Now, there's me taking one off there. I'm watching. I want to see the expansion. There's another one coming off. I want to see if I can get a little bit more movement on this candle. 
knowing that it's going to go to 11,048. And here's the third one. Okay, so now I have five contracts still. And here is the three I just peeled off. So now I can begin to consider moving that stop loss up because I've taken two partials. And it's now below where I think that is a measuring gap. So there's no need for it to trade back down there. If it does, I want to be out anyway. So I've locked in 37.95 on the balance of the trade with the expectation that we're going to gravitate towards this area here, which I'm going to make more prominent so you can understand that I'm going to take three contracts above this level. So you know what I'm going to be doing before I do it. I have five contracts still, and I'm going to do the same thing I just did, okay? which is running down equity. That's the principle, that's what I named it. The principle is that when we dig into the pools of liquidity, we don't just indiscriminate like you've seen me do in other examples. That's the easy way because I'm, I'm recording something and I'm busy, I'm doing other things. I was doing mentorship lessons and I still wanted to share examples. What you're seeing here is exactly how I trade. I'm peeling them off as the candlesticks are forming and expanding more and more and more. I'm not just dumping all of the, if I want to take three off, I'm not just doing, okay, let me just take three off immediately. I'm going to try to squeeze as much juice out of, as a lemon as I, as I can. And sometimes it's really nice. And other times it doesn't allow me to get all of them off. It will come back and reverse and I have to either exit the trade or maybe even retrace more and allows me to add more. I'm not wanting to add anything here, but um, reminding you all here as viewers that there's actual buy stops resting above those relative equal highs, and they're going to be targeted by the algorithm. And I'm reminding you all that three contracts will be peeled off the same way I just did it when we went above 11,018 and a quarter. So everything's going as planned, again, using TradingView real time. You can't do this with market replay. You can't fake this. It's all, I'm letting you see everything. You're seeing all the order numbers. Everything's popping up as you would expect it. So I'm taking off one, two contracts, one more contract when we expand above the high. I'm going to see it make a big, bold move above the candle's high right there. See how it's doing that? Now I'm running down equity. Every time we make a new high, I'm peeling one off. So now I have two contracts and I want to see if we can get up into that volume imbalance, that shaded yellow orangish area where I have typed out focus all the way up here, daily volume imbalance. Now think about where it's trading at right now. If I fail here and it comes all the way down and takes my stop loss from this point here, I don't care. I don't care because I've taken the lion's portion of the move. I've been very precise about where I've entered with logic. I've taken logical levels of partial profits along the way where smart money would engage because this is where the liquidity is. So I'm going to be looking for a run up into this area here. And you've probably already seen the little small video I posted on Twitter earlier today when it was just done moments after I completed the trade. And then this evening I shared it again on YouTube because I know someone or some of you like to steal credit and put videos by me that I don't unfortunately put the watermarks on them and you try to claim that they're yours. I don't like that. It's disrespectful and the trading community shouldn't allow those types of things. And to someone who doesn't know who I am, they might watch a video like this by someone else posting it on their channel or sharing it on their Facebook or their Twitter or their Telegram or something to that effect or you know, Instagram, you know, heroes. <laughs> And they'll think that, wow, you, you traded that, but they didn't. You're, you're seeing me do it. So I mentioned here, I don't care if I get stopped out. And now I'm moving a stop up aggressively. So again, the point is, is I've already took the portion of the trade-off that would be, in my opinion, the bulk. And I wish I would have taken one off here in hindsight. Like I wish I would have taken one because we need a higher high there. And I'm thinking I want to do it, but I'm like, nah, let me just show you that these orders are there. That's where I executed. So I'm flashing them on and off. It's not an imitation after the fact. This is real time data being recorded right there. And the executions are as exactly as they are at the time 
the trade ends. Now I'm changing the ticks because I know I have people, again, they don't like the fact that I show the paper trade in dollar terms. They're like, oh, you're flexing. I'm not flexing. I'm just, I don't care about the money because I can't spend that. But for those of you that like to see the ticks, you know, here you go. We're not doing 40 tick trades. We're doing monster several hundred tick trades. That's a championship level grade trader. Not somebody that's going in there and look nickel and diamond dollar menu trader. All right, daily volume imbalance is my trade terminus or final target. And unfortunately, as most of you already know, it's not a spoiler. <laughs> I get stopped out after uh, I take one of the contracts off because I feel like it's failing. Like right here is an opportunity. I should be taking one off and I don't. Because I really want to see it stop me out quickly or we'll run up there and hit my limit order and I'm done. I'm at my wits end, to be honest with you, because I know I don't usually trade this late on FOMC and or non-farm payroll week. But to teach you why, and I know some of you are looking at this saying, man, what's wrong with this? It's like, I want to trade like this. I don't like trading like this because the moves I usually trade in are much cleaner. They're much more faster running to my target. I don't have all this. I mean, think about it. This is a one minute chart and these candles are, you know, really lethargic. So I'm hoping at the time of this right here that it springs up air and snaps into that 11,075.50 level and allow me to get the limit order on the last two contracts. I'm noting that there's equal highs here and I'm thinking to myself, if it can go above that, I'm going to collapse and just be done. But I'm thinking, myself, if I do that, then it looks like I'm not trying to hold for my target. So I look like I'm a weak mentor. See, this is all the internal dialogue. <laughs> so I'm thinking to myself, okay, I, I probably missed the opportunity. But if we run back up and rebalance this range. So in other words, this down closed candle, if we come back up, I'm going to take one of them off. That way, if it does stop me out, at least I didn't get stopped out on the full two contracts on a trailed stop loss. Trailed stop losses, this is how you manage positions. Okay, There's people out there that can't be profitable, haven't shown to be profitable, and are waffling on you know, live streams with nonsense that come out of their, their face about why markets do this and do that. They'll say that trailing stop losses are nonsense and that you shouldn't be worrying about it. Well, if you're going to be taking down several hundred, 600, 500, tick type trades and I took one contract off here to re reduce the likelihood of the sting if I got stopped out on the full two remaining contracts. So now I don't really care whatsoever if it trades up, you know, up to my limit or it takes my stop because I got nine contracts in the bank and well, proverbial bank, right? It's paper trading. So the other opportunity here I have, and I miss it too, is that relative equal high that line I have drawn across them. If it trades above that, then I could collapse it there and be done. And that would again look like I can't hold for my target. Why didn't I hold for my target? So I just commit to the idea that I'm going to let it take my stop or hit my target because where it's at right now, I could care less. It's, it's a beautiful run and you got to protect it. You have to have an understanding of how to trail stop losses and you'll listen to people that have no real context as to where they should place a stop loss or trail it. They'll just put uh, you know a stop loss on a chart, move it around. And you ever seen them show you examples where they have a stop loss and then you open the stop up wider while the trade's on? I don't ever do that. <laughs> I don't do that. That's somebody that's communicating. They have no idea what price is going to do. They have no idea how to trade and they're gambling. And they're just hoping it's going to move in their favor. And when it wiggles a little bit, they don't know how far it's going to retrace. See, that's the benefit of knowing someone that's been doing it for 30 years. I know how these markets book clearly. And it's not to brag. I'm not bragging. I'm trying, trying to show you by contrast without really belittling anybody in particular. But you probably have seen many people across the years or months or weeks of you know YouTube and other social media 
How many have you ever seen manage their trades like this and show you that they can do it? Showing you a trade log of history of trades is not proof. That's not proof. Anybody can do that. Anybody can create something like that. But when you get in there, whether it's paper trading, whether it's a demo or live, if they can execute with the logic that they supposedly understand and teach and manage the positions, and it goes to targets and they can see partials being peeled off, that's undeniable. And I'm using a medium that I can't fake. Not that it's in my character to do that, but trading view, doing this, you can't fake this. This is real. And I'm saying here, you witness me trading my market maker buy model. And again, you can find out more information about that on my Scout Sniper series in my YouTube channel. I don't recall how many videos are in that series, but uh, that's the series I introduced order block theory initially. And if I'm not mistaken, I do believe that's the, also the, the teaching series that I did bring in the market maker buy and sell model. So it came real close to my stop loss. On Forex, that would have stopped me out. <laughs> That's the difference in the, the markets. Uh, these are a lot more forgiving and more precise than Forex. And I have no interest in returning back to Forex in my own trading. So I, I don't have, I mean, I'll do analysis for you all this year, but I'm not personally going to be trading Forex anymore. And you're probably wondering why, why, why are you doing that? Uh, with the central bank digital currencies that are going to come online this year, uh, that's going to have a major impact on crypto and also Forex. And it may create huge risk. So I'm not opening myself up to that. I'd rather be in a market I cut my teeth on, which is this market right here. In the early 90s, I was a bond and S&P trader. So many of the people that are pretending to be educators today or quote unquote profitable traders, uh, they were in elementary school or not even born when I was trading S&P. Now, right here, I have the opportunity <laughs> to peel that last one off and be done with it when it runs just above that relative equal high, a little trend line that I don't extend over. But that was my uh, little chance to, to do it. I'm looking at that as the last line of defense. It needs to run here and go into my target. Or if it runs above that relative equal high to the left and fails, then I'm, I'm done, which is, in fact, what you'll see happen. But you want to get your position funded that means take partials along the way and then move your stop to a point of there's no real consequence to you being stopped out you don't care i have no emotional commitment to the results at this point now if it now right there that right there should have been me peeling it off and and if it was a funded real live traded account i would have done that because i've been impatient because we're looking at the time going into noon and that lunch hour is usually when we have a retracement and you'll see that occur here and take my stop. But having your trade managed with a trailing stop loss, knowing where to place your stop loss and here's my stop. I'm just saying it was a nice trade over 500 ticks for those who like to count that kind of stat. Okay, and now you're gonna see it in real, close to real time. I'm showing the executions again, so that way nothing's changed. Everything as I was flashing them earlier during the live portion of price booking and me managing the trade, everything here showing you from the lowest point all of this is exactly how you would see it on TradingView if you did it yourself. No trickery, no fraud, no making up, no MT4, rented MT4 servers, 
I don't do those things. Okay. People that can't trade like me are that precise. They like to make up all kinds of nonsense and stories to justify why some people should collectively come against me with hate or cancel ICT. Well, if I'm going to do what I'm doing here and what I've done already for the community, which in my opinion is more than anybody else, uh, I could be making millions of dollars teaching and I'm choosing not to do that. And I'm going to invest my time in all of you for free. Take advantage of it because I'm not going to be doing it again. So many people have asked me to talk about you know, real-time data, show it live, do this, call this. I'm going to do it for the entire year. And there's still going to be people doubting. <laughs> so for an FOMC day, I call this satisfactory. All right, so in summary, I promised I would show you in relationship to the U.S. 100. CFD, non-US trader, like if you're using MT4 broker type thing, and you can't trade the futures contract in the US, okay, I'll show you the relationship of how it performed. It actually did better than the actual futures contract did in, in respect to that daily volume imbalance. But uh, this trade was a paper trade. And here is the account history. So from 100 all the way up to finally at $121,185. So 21.1% return, one trade. And there's the business. So you can see it's all real, all executions done just like you saw me record them. Okay. And because I know TradingView follows me on Twitter, and because I know that they may have a way to monitor my trades and, and track them, I don't like that kind of stuff. Um, you may think that's schizophrenic. <laughs> you may look at it as other reasons why, oh, you're trying to hide this, you're trying to hide that. I will, okay, I will show you how to build up an account in 2023, okay? Uh, I don't need to do it like this. Like this is me doing championship level type trading. So uh, that's not promised to you, but I will show you how to build an account up. So kind of like a funded account, how to get, how to pass a funded account and then how to manage it once you get it properly and not, not try to shoot for the stars with these types of results, because this is, again, this is championship level trading. Like if you're in the competition, if you're trying to show the, uh, inferior competition that they can't even be in the same vicinity or arena as you this is what you do okay and this is the part that irks people okay i always do this and i've always done that with my mt4 demo accounts too and <laughs> it drives people nuts like it drives people nuts and i don't care because i know the more people that know about me the more likely they are to be able to look into what it is I'm doing. And then I would hate to have someone attach some kind of trade copier. I can't stand the idea of that actually happening. So that's why I do it. You know, I'll do examples like this, show my son or show all of you. And then I'll go in and I'll do a bunch of nonsense trades. Okay. And then delete the account. And I've done it since I've been on trading view. And the few times that I did it in private showing my, private mentorship group, they watched me run up an account there too. And it's just a matter of not wanting to be tracked, basically. That's it. I mean, it to me, it's not important, you know, because I'm not selling signals. I can clearly do this. <laughs> okay. I can do it whenever I want to do it. And it's not imperative that I show you every single trade in an account i don't i don't need to do that okay you might think i'm obligated to do that i'm not um, i'm going to challenge you to look at the things i'm showing you here and all the other examples that i make public and see if it's not the logic that i've actually taught you in the tutorials and all the lectures because it's the exact logic it's not something else it's not a twisting and contortion of things that make it feel like it's like that, but it's really not. It's absolutely right out of the lectures. 
exactly as I taught it because it's the algorithm. It is the algorithm. So uh, let's take a look at enclosing the US 100. Okay, we're going to use this one here. Okay, um, I've, I've used both of these interchangeably, but for this one here, because I already have my notes on it, I will use that. And you can see that everything being equal, there is the one minute in balance. Not exactly, as I mentioned before, it doesn't book exactly like the futures market, but it's real close to it. And it trades down into it here, rallies up. Let me uh, magnify the chart here. Here's that fair value gap after a swing high. So there's your shift in market structure there. Comes down, hits the top of the one minute imbalance and inside of the fair value gap on the one minute chart here. So it should stop. It should not completely close that in. Rallies. Here's your imbalance here. It should not completely close it in. Leave it open. It does. It trades into it a little bit, but leaves it open as you would expect. It rallies. Injection block, partial, right there. This wick high, partial there. Relative equal highs taken. Yes, and then into the daily volume imbalance. Okay, so look at the respect of it right here. See that? Where is that coming from? Right. There's nothing over here. That's the daily volume imbalance. That's the algorithm. <laughs> okay. So same market making signatures in the US 100 for non-US traders. So don't feel like, oh, you're not doing Forex, ICT. You don't love us anymore. You can trade with your Forex broker and trade the US 100 or the US 500. You know, it's tracking very close to, it won't be the same price, but it's tracking the same behavior. We'll say it that way. Okay, it's not going to be perfect, identical, but it's going to be enough for you to be able to trade it. And if you can look at this and see what I'm showing you, it isn't this close enough. Like if you don't have the opportunity to trade the U.S. futures market, isn't this good enough to study? So that's all I'm asking you to do. Pour yourself into it and look for these types of moves and you'll find them. Now, this is not model 2022 mentorship. Okay, this is me teaching you an actual execution based on real market making. It's not white call. It's not anything except for what I taught in my core content lessons and my sniper series. So this is actually me in, entering on the low risk buy. See, this is smart money reversal. Let me walk you through it real quick. Original consolidation. We leave the consolidation, come back up in consolidation distribution. Redistribution, smart money reversal, low risk buy, reaccumulation, reaccumulation. Back to the original consolidation where buy side liquidity is. There you go. That's the market maker buy model. Okay. Everything that I use to go long in the NASDAQ futures is what I taught with these models. This is an entire model. You could be a buyer down here, and that could be your entire run right there, and you're done. Or you could wait for this move here, buy it, and then wait for it to get the relative equal highs and not trade down here. That's fine. Or you can buy here, add here, add here, and then get out. So it's a matter of what it makes sense to you. If it doesn't make sense for you to take the entries I used, that's fine. Don't, don't feel like you have to be able to see every entry and understand why I'm doing it. You're going to find over the course of this year, there's going to be patterns and setups that I refer to that you already see coming. And when you hear me talk about it, you're going to be smiling and grinning, much like you are right now, because some of you already know what this feels like. You're seeing your model, your setup, your choice setup, that unique thing that's going to make you the consistent trader that you're aspiring to be. And don't let anybody, me included, drive you into one particular approach to entry or time frame or market. Everything that I'm teaching you here works in Forex, any pair. It works in stocks. It works in commodities. It works in bonds. It works in currency futures. It works in obviously index futures. 
Okay, so I'm not going to co-sign crypto because I don't trade crypto. I have no experience with it except for trading a demo, and that doesn't mean anything. Okay, uh, I have traded these markets, you know, U.S. futures, S&P. I traded S&P, you know, back in 1993. That was the earliest trade I took in that market, and I traded bonds in 1993. So, again, most of your guys out there that you're learning from or try to learn from or pretend to be teachers, uh, they weren't even born yet. And the other ones that are older that are trying to teach today, uh, they were in elementary school when I was trading these markets. So there's a lot of older traders than me. I'm just saying that by far and large, the most talking heads today that try to be educators, uh, they, they haven't been around long enough to know what it is. They haven't seen market crashes. They haven't seen bubbles, except for the crypto bubble. You know, who cares about that? The, um, the necessary scars in trauma that comes from doing it for a long time. They don't have that. And you want to learn from somebody that's gone through it and seen the ugly side of all this stuff and claw their way through it. And that's what I'm trying to present to you here just with three decades of it. And if the Lord gives me time to do four decades, then great. <laughs> but uh, that fourth decade will be in private because I'm just trying to pull myself out publicly here the last time and it's up to you to seize upon that opportunity and make the best of it because once it's gone this 50 year old dude that's been talking to you he's uh he's done i'm going to be doing other things in my life that will bring me and my family enjoyment not that i won't miss doing this because i will I won't be doing it at the pace that you're used to seeing. So hopefully you found this one insightful. I know it was very long, but this is about what the live session is going to feel like. So if you got into this thinking that trading is like those little vignette videos where it only takes two minutes to get money, <laughs> uh, you're going to be in for a, a rude awakening because it's a lot of waiting. A lot of waiting and weighing and deciding and second guessing and all that stuff normal so get ready for it because whether you're here live when it's happening or watching it in the recording it's going to be very very long and that's just the way it is until next time be safe